I'm going to say this, this is going to be more like a two hour video. Oh yeah, 100%. With how many questions I'm asking and we are five minutes in, yes. No, we're doing just one part Sito, it's hour long. I, I, if I did both of them, we would be here for way too long. I still need some dinner, man. As someone who doesn't necessarily serve the Omnissiah, <sighs> but someone who can appreciate them, mm. you will not be getting my legs today, as I'll be replacing but them. But I want your various legs! various things, depending on which faction we are currently talking about, to add a little bit more context and possible comedy <laughs> to whatever the hell I am currently doing. So I just love this idea. I love this idea, but I still want his legs, though. Please, Giba. <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah, no, Sito, that's too much for one stream. Hello, everybody. My name is Bricky, and this is going Hello. to be a long video and a large project that has been going on mm -hmm. for quite some time. This is... I need two hands for this. This is every single Warhammer 40k race in kind of a nutshell, explained, <laughs> a little bit of explanation. Just a bit here and there, don't worry about it. A little bit of lore, a little bit of talking about the tabletop, mostly lore, what they're all about, and also a little bit of background for those of you who just have no clue what Warhammer 40,000 is. Thanks. Hey, so I can understand it. See, Warhammer and Warhammer 40,000. I have no clue, yet I still purge heretics the same. Listen, it works. Rip my boy, uh, Sanguinius. Why were it? Did he die? He rested in pizza. Oh, I would love to rest in pizza. Can we rest in pizza? I wanna chomp. Sanguinius is super dead. Oh boy. Poor boy. Poor boy just died. Horace massacred my boy. Horace massacred too many people. Let me eat a cookie for uh, Sanguinius. Ow. Reason why blood angels got. Oh! Mm, this is the boy. Okay. I got it. I got it. Hmm. That's no good though. That sounds good. <laughs> I don't remember names, but if you connect it to a story, I will remember it. Yeah, like if you tell me, oh, he was the Primarch of the Blood Angels, then I understand. I remember what you're talking about. But if you tell me just a name, my brain doesn't connect what it is whatsoever. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm sorry, that's how it works. Basically, the golden retriever of the War Warhammer 40k. Oh, that sounds cute. Isn't that Gulliman? Mmm, do we have few different um golden retrievers? No, Gulliman is Boy Scout, not a golden retriever. <laughs> is a universe people hear plenty of, but don't know a what whole lot What happened with his about. face? They see, oh. Why his face has like little circles? I, I I want to know now. Oh, there's these dudes in big power armor with chainsaw swords, and they got these big old green orcs, and there's some <laughs> bugs over there, and everyone calls these guys weebs. And then there's these spiky bitches over here, and I I don't get it. I don't understand. Yeah. Where do I start? Well, this video is particularly for you, or for those of you. I'm not a heretic viewer. Excuse me. I'm very much a believer of an apparel. This uh, they symbolize century of service. Ah, oh, I see. Silver circle uh, on the face are a century, if I remember right. Who have a little bit of knowledge, which are kind of curious about each of the different races and factions. Yeah, in Warhammer. that's me. So overall, the Warhammer universe is vast when it comes to lore is and it? background <laughs> and each different faction is so different with the things that they believe in and some are human some are transhuman like where they all have all these crazy ass electronics on them you've got aliens and you've got the <laughs> i love that he has a freaking like uh skeleton leggies and then when it comes to this boy he has freaking leggings that are like destroyed <laughs> chaos factions and there's so much to entail that I decided to embark on this project to tell you what tell each and every me. single one of them is about and mm -hmm. what the Warhammer universe is about as well to give at least a little bit of an intro to remember guys this a little bit of intro is an hour long video <laughs> to this extremely bloated but very very enjoyable world that I and many others partake in. So, I will be explaining every single faction in the Warhammer 40k universe, at least all the factions you can play as, and some mm -hmm. smaller factions here and there. I will not be discussing absolutely everything in it. No blueberry boys? I checked and the silver stud is 50 years, golden is 100. Oh, I see. 
because that is a little bit much. And I'm not going to go too mega deep into the lore. I'm going to give you a pretty solid overview of each of the different factions okay. and have you learn a little bit about them. And we'll discuss a little bit of the tabletop as well in case you are curious about that. But for this episode I'm a, entirely, I'm we are discussing the know. Imperium of Man because that takes up a fat chunk of Warhammer lore. <laughs> oh, what is Warhammer 40,000? Why well, that? The 40,000 starts off is the year 40,000. The 41st millennium, that's where it takes place, mm. is mm. in the year mm. 40,000, 41,000 AD. We learned that in the first video. You're already more knowledgeable. Let me read. Yay, we know something already. We smart. Here's a big board. Imperium of Kek. <laughs> you a quote, first of many quotes, in this uh -huh. video. It is the 41st millennium. For more than a hundred years, the Emperor has sat immobile on the golden throne of Earth. He is the master of mankind mm. by the mm. will of mm. the gods mm. and master mm. of a million worlds by the might of his inexhaustible armies. He is a rotting carcass, writhing invisibly with power from the dark age of technology. He is the carrion lord of the Imperium, for whom a thousand souls are sacrificed every day so that he may never truly die. To be a man in such times is to be amongst untold billions. It is to live in the cruelest and most bloody regime imaginable. These are the tales of those times. Forget the power of technology and science, for so much has been forgotten, never to be relearned. For That's not true, we have mechanicals for a reason! He will give back everything! Bricky Show loves his quotes. Quotes are good! Quotes are important. Well, yes, but no, I know. We can't build everything. Get the promise of progress. Mechanicus don't like to give back. Well, yeah. Why inventions are prohibited, though? Why can't we create new stuff? Why that's a no-no? I wanna know. Now I'm interested. Because of AI? Oh, okay. <laughs> Tech heresy? Okay. It went too bad? Okay, okay, true, I remember now. The AI kind of was bad, and yeah. And understanding, for in the grim, dark future, there is only war. There is no peace amongst the stars, only an eternity of carnage and slaughter, and the laughter of thirsting gods. They just have Everything you. blows. And it blows fucking hard. Warhammer is probably the most dark and depressing universes ever in fiction. Yeah. Or at least like like top three. Everything is Top three, no, I would say I would say it's the most depressing and like uh, sad. And because it's heresy, heresy! No building new stuff. It's so absurdly horrible, destructive, or overpowered that it all kind of ends up canceling itself out. It's like Dota. War. <laughs> it's like Dota. <laughs> War rages across the galaxy. Interstellar travel is only possible due to sacrificing a thousand yep. souls a day to a. I actually have a question. We know that the Emperor is a dying corpse. We know that he needs a thousand souls sacrificed for him every day to survive. What would happen if we sacrifice souls not of human to him, but different species? Thousand psychers specifically. Oh! Then elders are an option, or Dakari, because we could then do that, right? And use the war. It's about soul power fuel. Too few elder, to be honest. Gosh darn it. We don't have enough of the evil Dakari to do this. Gosh damn it. Well, yeah, humans are more accessible. True, true. Rotting carcass of a man who you believe to be your god. Demonic gods and just demons Ayo. tear open the fabric of reality. Basically, he needs mind powers to keep himself alive. Mm -hmm. I think the uh, Inquisition would start asking questions, to be honest. Why? Why would the Inquisition ask questions about that? That's a good way to go around killing thousand humans every day. And killing our enemies. Mm. Healthy mind, healthy body. I don't think it works for him very well. 
<laughs> I feel like his body is not very healthy. <laughs> the motto of Inquisitions, innocence proves nothing. Oh, figure out the rest. Yeah, I don't want them to question stuff. Drink water. Hi, is a hoopty. Welcome. Ooh. Thank you so much for hydrate. I unfortunately have no drink available right now. I ran out of my tea. But thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. If I remember correctly, if they let him die, he would be reborn. Someone tell me if I'm wrong. I don't think so. I don't, they don't let him down, uh, die for a reason, right? Hi, Firefox. Why do you fail me? Audi on a whim. Other Xenos or even other humans end up killing each other in untold billions across the galaxy. Yep. It is a time of unending war, slaughter, and a bloodbath amongst yep. everybody. Planets are deemed unrecoverable and are completely destroyed on a whim. Yep. Everything sucks, but that's like the charm of it. See, everything in Warhammer is evil. But being mm -hmm. evil is kind of fun. Like, humanity, in its own right, is a xenophobic, prejudiced, and religious zealot group that kill yes. each other just as much as they kill all of their enemies. Of course they do. Heretics must die. He is a uh, perpetual, so yes, but once he dead, safe, interstellar travel is gone and humanity is fine. Yeah, so... Uh, we can't wait for him to reappear. Yeah, so the issue is that if he dies, we have no beacon, we cannot travel, thus our whole thingy dies, and we don't know when and how he would come back, and where he would be back, so yeah. Humanity isn't racist, they are equal heresy perjures. Exactly, they just kill heresy. Yeah, so I was right, but it would screw everything up. Yeah, it would still screw us over, even if we gr grab him back, and even if he does come back somewhere, someone somehow we it would take too long for him to come back probably and we wouldn't get him right away because we have to find him right it's not like he comes back and he's like in the same spot where he dies he appears somewhere else most likely in the galaxy so good luck finding the boy <laughs> i wonder if his personality and goals would be the same or would he change and that's interesting because that means that chaos gods can't take him and keep him in the in the chaos realm i wonder why vulcan is also a perpetual and he still hasn't responded oh boy yeah this is the issue we don't know how many years it would take him to come back i'm going to say this this is going to be more like a two hour video oh yeah 100 percent. with how many questions i'm asking and we are five minutes in yes perpetuals are kind of like avatar in the last airbender oh yeah i get you what you mean yeah that's that would be rather hard to 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 survive that long without the boy but and they're like mid mid to high tier evil on the evil scale of warhammer <laughs> nope Orcs are not evil. I stand by this statement. Orcs aren't evil necessarily. Nobody is good. No matter who you are, everyone is at some... Check the list again? Okay. Wait a second. Evil scale. My roles, that guy, towel players, Imperium of Human, Elder, Orcs, Tyranids, playing low tier for fun playing by intent guys who bring food <laughs> okay so 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 yeah i i think orcs should be in evilness okay no i see why orcs are uh, above tyranids it's because tyranids are they don't have a logic as a dnd <laughs> honestly don't remember if perpetuals remember their past lives i wonder orcs are just silly guys yeah we approve of the first spot. Yes, we approve of the first spot. Whoever brings food is 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 very good. Very good. They should be above his roles. <laughs> no! Orcs just want to fight. Exactly, this is what I mean. Hello there, Silas. Welcome. Happy to see you. Nids just hungry lots. Yeah, that's why I mean that's why I'm saying that it makes sense why they're below orcs, because orcs are self-aware. So if they kill, they understand that they kill. Tyranids are just hungry boys. They just want to eat. They just want to go around and eat. They are not inherently evil. They don't know the the evil thingy. So I understand that. I understand that. Tau players. <laughs> I wonder where are the um, players of... What are they called? 
Um, um, the old boys. Orgs just wanna have fun. Yeah, they just wanna have fun. Tyrannids are just insects. Exactly, they're just creatures. They, they don't have a logic. They just want bigger families and need food. Yeah, necrons, necrons, exactly. How did you freaking know? <laughs> How did you how did you figure it out that I was talking about Necrons? Yeah, I wonder where are the Necron players on the scale. <laughs> because I'm liking Necrons so far a lot. <laughs> Freaking chat figuring <laughs> figuring out streamer. Streamer, how do you call the old ones Necrons? <laughs> oh my goodness. Because they do that's only old race that isn't here. True. <laughs> True. Makes sense. Good catch, good catch. ...of Warhammer. Nobody is good. No matter who you are, every- Okay, who, who is that creature? The- Oh, wait a second. ...full scale of Warhammer. The, 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 Nobody the, the is yellow good. boy. No matter who-, who that? Oh, this is Tau. Okay, 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 okay. Space weebs. I still have to learn why they space weebs. Hopefully, hopefully this, this video tells me. Mech warriors. Okay, we gotta learn about Tauden. Who you are, everyone is a some they flavor, like some color of evil. <laughs> Whoever you pick, you are going to be the bad guy. Are we the bad guys? Are we the bad guys, Todd? Is that the... It's not true. Because they like mechs, because they are the mech uh, enthusiasts. I see. But that's the fun of it. Because being the bad guy is badass. Villains are cool. They look cool. They got cool outfits. They got cool weapons. They got yeah. cool armies. Villains are cool, man. And when sure. everyone is a villain, everyone is pretty cool. That's what makes <laughs> us so charming. We are all evil to be cool. Are we the baddies? Our huts, they got schools on them. No, Imperium based heresy. <laughs> they got cool legs. 40k is pretty cool. Yeah, it's like, hey. If we are all evil, we are all cool. <laughs> ...is that everyone can be the bad guy. Yeah! So let's start off talking about the main bad guy. Wait, guys. Wait, guys. If we are all cool, I should be having this one. <laughs> we are all cool, us. We are all evil. <laughs> I, quote unquote, uh -huh. the Imperium of Man. It's hair, whack. The Imperium of Man is the main- <laughs> Wait, is it really turned evil? No, I would never! I, I'm still Salamander, remember? I saved my small brothers and sisters. If everyone is evil, no one is. Exactly! Basically, this is a weaponized evil. <laughs> Empire of the human race. All of humanity is under this one flag called the Imperium. Not all of it! There is heretics. Those are not under the flag of Imperium. Mm. Not all humanity is good. About 10,000 years ago, there was a man. He was the emperor, the emperor of mankind. The a 10-foot tall psychic demigod. Who yeah, we know the emperor. I too am not under the Imperium flag. Of course you're not. Of course you're not, potato. They're not humans, they're heretics. Tori, not even stream tag chaos and chill. Shush! I'm never evil. It's Led just chaos. Across the Wait, oh no. Oh no, I see the implication. No, 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 no. Silas, Silas, the chaos part has been added before I ever heard of Warhammer in that way. And the chaos is not that I am for the chaos gods. It's chaos created during my streams as I'm, I'm, uh, 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 I swear. I'm not the heretic here! Inquisition, holy music, no! Yes, Mr. Grey, not this bunny right here, no, 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 I swear, I'm, I'm, I'm innocent, no! It's like time. You heard it from Tori Live, guys. Tori seeks chaos and wants no! chaos. She is a heretic, brothers. No, please, I'm not, I swear, I'm okay! I'm, I'm not, I'm not the heretic, I swear! Moshi Moshi, the position, no, please! I, I, I'm not a heretic! Ah, I swear! Innocence proves nothing! Ah! 
star. Thank you for 400 bitties, by the way, Potato. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> to colonize tons and tons of worlds, create superhuman soldiers, and really bring humanity into a new age. This man, yeah. the emperor of mankind, was a psyker. A psyker is like a magician of sorts. He was the space wizard! Oh no, wait, I see the loyalist tag. You're clear for now. Whoa. Whoa. I'm fine, guys. I'm okay. Everything is okay now. Yeah! <laughs> With that, my powers are exhausted for tonight. Oh, it's okay, Potato. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Chaos and loyalist feeding for an alpha legion player. Yes! I did it! I proved myself as an alpha! <laughs> I'm Alpharius! In the world of 40k, there is the warp, the immaterium, kind of like hell, but sort of like a purgatory dimension mm. of hell. Mm. And a psyker is someone who can take that power and yeah. manifest it through their mind to use it to do stuff. Well, like witchcraft Wizards. stuff, magician stuff, spells, and lots of other things, but we don't want to get too into that. The emperor, big boy psyker, top tier, A+, plus, maybe even S. Now the He was like the big boy. I shall kick myself to sleep, have fun all, uh, catch you later. Thank you so much for joining. Please sleep well, uh, rest well. Thank you so, so much. Good night, potato. She influences the salamanders to save citizens. Exactly, exactly. I'm Alpharius in the Salamanders Legion. Emperor created a bunch of sons. Yes, created a bunch of sons known as he the He did Primarchs. not made it. He created 20. 18. <laughs> Every single time he gets me. He created 20. 18. <laughs> Every freaking single time. 18 Primarchs to have them lead all of the different legions of humanity to the different stars yeah, 18, and of plans course. to help colonize and bring it out. He made These a mistake. Primarchs not 20, are not 20, basically like no. little versions of the Emperor. Not all of them are psychers, but a lot of them are very, very powerful, and mm -hmm. they lead his special mm -hmm. Space Marine legions. Then this big clusterfuck happened called the Horus Heresy. This boy who decided to fuck a demon, and he says, Dad, it's not a phase! Second and 11 legions? Uh, what second and 11 legions? I don't know. There is no 2 and 11 between 1 and 20. Of course not. Where the Emperor's favorite son, the Primarch, Horus, ended up joining Chaos and leading nine other, well... Screw you! Horus, exactly! Screw you! The Horus heresy. Oh, yeah. I guess eight. Nine of the 18. Half half of his Primarchs mm. directly to Earth to fight down the Emperor himself. Now, if you want to know what chaos is, remember what I mentioned earlier, the warp, that yeah. immaterium, the hellish place? Yeah. In there relies the four chaos gods. <gasps> Look at that slanesh art! My goodness! <sighs> Maybe Horus liked the very specific demon who is slanesh. Just had to ruin the fun, right? He couldn't just let us all be happy. What if the real Horus Heresy was a uh, Erebus and we meant all the <laughs> I don't think that it works. We can't do you cover it. Oh, 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 wait. You can't see me because of the freaking. <laughs> Probably better for YouTube. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let me let me show you guys. Let me show you. I I truly do be covering it. I'm sorry. There you go. Look, guys. Look at this pretty. Oh, ah, so pretty! Oh, very pretty! It's already on YouTube though, exactly! It's already on YouTube! You good, we good, we good! We got you, we got you! She very pretty! Hi! Hello there! <laughs> yeah, rules change, that's true. Okay, let me, let me jump back, let me jump back. Very pretty girl! Imagine like Satan and three other Satans. The warp <laughs> being kind of evil, those chaos gods, that's the reason. And so those chaos gods manipulated Horus, and then Horus helped manipulate all eight other Primarchs mm. to lead this giant coup. So you're simping for a chaos god? No! No, 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 no. I'm just saying that the art is pretty, not the goddess itself. I'm pretending, yeah! <laughs> To lure out the heretics! I have a poster at home so that heretics come to me. Yeah. 
<laughs> directly on the Emperor on Earth, and they fucked up shit. After this huge civil war, Horus died, but not before yep. brutally wounding the Emperor. Yeah. And right at the end of his life, they put the Emperor on this large, golden throne on Earth, in which he is now alive, just barely, but slowly he's alive. rotting away, powering something called the Astronomicon, so long as he stays alive, and is fed a thousand people a day. The Astronomicon- yep. I actually wonder because he is there, but he's still deteriorating, right? He's not actually being kept in the same state. He's constantly, slowly, but surely dying, right? He's not just persisting there uh, and being. I have Sudanish poster over my bed to lure heretics to, exactly. Okay, so he's still slowly dying. We're just really, really trying to slow the process down as much as we can. Okay, okay. It's like the North Star. If you want to do interstellar travel in 40k, yep. you need to pass through that demonic warp I mentioned earlier. But how God, do you know, know where how. you're going? Well, the Emperor is there putting a nice little navigator right there. He helps navigate you to you know to where him. you're going. If you want to go from Earth to some crazy solar system across the way, you need to go through that warp and then you need to know where you're going. Go through there and pop your way out. It's like yeah. uh, doing nether travel. In yeah, it's like nether in Minecraft. It's been 10,000 years. What's another 10,000 years? Yeah, I'm not even gonna count how many souls that is. <laughs> in Minecraft, so you can shorten the distance between going to areas. Yeah. So long as the Emperor is alive, and being fed a thousand people a day to stay alive, you can do that. The moment he dies, Interstellar travel's gone. For all of That's actually a question for me. Is it that the, uh, we cannot enter the warp, or is it because we don't have the beacon, uh, we just get lost immediately and basically die in the warp as soon as we enter. Is that what it is? The warp won't be closed for us. Yeah, we can't navigate without it, so we just get lost. Okay. No beacon equals lost. We can enter, but get lost. Yep, yep. Okay, okay. Just wanted to make sure. Humanity. You're so boned. Now, since the Horus Heresy 10,000 years ago, the Imperium has fallen from grace substantially. All technology has started to dwindle and die. There is now giant fundamental religious extremists yeah. that now believe the Emperor of Mankind was a deity, a true living god, which is probably the last thing the- Well, he's still living. He, 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 be, he be still alive. Not well, but he's still alive. Emperor would have wanted to be remembered for. So now you have this thing called the Ecclesiarchy, which is this giant church oh entirely God. devoted to spreading the good word of the Emperor. It's he is so now huge. the Holy Emperor God, the God Emperor of mankind. And all of the Imperium has taken up worshipping him to the fullest extent and mm. killing anything that isn't humanity in his name. Well, mm, we counting heretics as heretics, of course. In medieval times, if stars disappeared, so you couldn't navigate using them. Oh, yeah, yeah, I understand what you mean. Well, in the sea, right? Because on the land, you still can navigate. We learned about this in the comments. The proto-primar going rogue. Oh, yeah! See, I mean, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The Imperium has this futuristic gothic tone to it. And yes. a hefty religious zone. Other than the huge them. shit. If you think... Instead of a preaching no gods, oh, it was the god emperor. Oh, I see. Anything against the emperor, that's heresy and you deserve to yep. die. That is called yep. being a heretic. Yup. Heretics die in 40k. There is no yep. such thing as freedom of religion. There is no such thing as freedom of speech. This is punishment for a heretic? I'm sorry, heretic. I mean, I shouldn't be sorry because you're a heretic. You shall die. Emperor was extremist, uh, extremist atheist. Yeah, which is funny, right? Because the emperor himself did not want it to be worshipped. But when he lost autonomy of how he is being portrayed, because he now is stuck on the throne and cannot like really do anything, they immediately freaking turned and they're like, yep. Yup, we, we're doing religion, the emperor is our god. He wanted uh, to eradicate faith to prevent chaos influence. Yeah, and now look at that.
No one look at that what happened. When he well under his nose. Under his nose. If no gods, then no chaos gods. Exactly. Beach. So long as you are against the emperor, there is no such thing as any kind of tolerance. Everyone no. is a religious zealot. Some yes. more than others. But no matter what, you preach in that good word. So right now, everyone in emperor. humanity is trying to expand their empire across the stars. If you are a heretic, someone who doesn't believe in the emperor, mm. you are deserving of death. If you yes. believe in the chaos gods, you are also a heretic and you deserve yes. death. If you yes. are an alien race of any kind, you are a filthy Xenos and you deserve death as yes. well. So long as the murder continues and- And if you're an orc, you also deserve death. Humanity expands, the Imperium of Man is very, very happy. However, the largest fighting anymore. force of this Imperium is my personal favorite faction, and the first faction we will discuss, the Astra Militarum, or also known as the Imperial Guard. Oh? Now, if you pour milk before cereal, you'll deserve death! Hmm. Um. I, um. I would never do that, of course not! I would ne never, always. Cereal first. Yeah, yeah. Why you say it? Yeah! <laughs> you finished. That's it, man. Game over, man. The Imperial Guard is the main fighting force of the Imperium, and in a world of horrifying creatures, galactic monstrosities, mm -hmm. the literal demons themselves breaking Wait, through the fabric of time to kill you, the Imperial Guard are untold billions of regular men and women wearing modern day, like, flak armor with a laser rifle. This is the humble Laz gun. The this sounds... This what? Th these are the little brothers and sisters, yeah! The main weapon of the Imperial Guard. It fires <laughs> superheated <laughs> plasma... Rather flesh rights if anything, right? <laughs> lasers at an extremely fast fire rate it is reliable never jams it can blow off limbs giant hey! holes in concrete <laughs> it is overall an extremely devastating weapon in modern day it is one of the weakest in the 40k universe yeah a, a laser rifle that never jams it could blow off limbs one of the weakest weapons that's the world we're in right now but who can why do we still use them then? And why do we give them to the weakest legion that we have? The poor brothers and sisters, how are they supposed to help themselves? Read the pop-up. I read it. It could blow off limbs. It's jokingly referred to as a flashlight. Yeah, I, I got the joke. Weakest in the 40k universe. Cheap to produce. Yeah, mm, a, a laser rifle maybe. that never jams. It could blow off limbs. Cheap, reliable, and easy to mass produce. Mm. Hello there, out. Welcome, how are you doing today? Hi, hi! One of the weakest Kalash weapons. Kalashnikov 40 That's the yeah. world we're in right now. But who cares? Because the Imperial Guard has, in each battle, 500,000 of these men and women. 30,000 large armored tanks. So, when do they deploy these, right? Because these are their weakest soldiers that they have. So I'm guessing this is like the first line of defense, and if this line of defense doesn't succeed, they go with everywhere all the time. They're the first one. Okay. Okay. They have 10, a lot of them. 10,000 artillery batteries. The Imperial Guard wins through sheer numbers and firepower. Mm -hmm. They kind of have this World War I, World War II style aesthetic with legions of guardsmen as well as high company commanders and generals on the field along with them and multiple mm -hmm. kinds of troops. If Space Marine join, it's a bad situation. Okay, so Space Marines are like, okay, this is going badly. We got to grab the stronger boys. Cannon uh, fodder, pretty much. If Grey Knights join, it's worse. <laughs> yup. A normal Imperial Guard battle starts off with artillery, long lines of artillery, cracking the crust of the planet underneath mm. the enemy's feet. And as this barrage continues, hundreds of thousands of guardsmen see a sea 
of guardsmen surges forward, firing and charging at everything oh. possible while the planet rumbles as tanks roll up behind them. Gunships mm. block out the sun and tanks block out the dirt with the steps and hoof prints of millions of guardsmen. It is through Boys. numbers and sh Getting an uh, introduction in the 20, uh, 40k with Torin and Lysa! Very good idea! Sheer sundering firepower. They are the first and last line of defense for the Imperium. And so I understand that they enter the battle first and leave last. Noted! Brigitte 40k VTuber pipeline working as intended. Exactly! Yeah! We're learning! make up a huge bulk of the battles. The Imperial Guard is also made up of tons of different kinds of regiments. The Katachin Jungle F- Hello there, Rumble Boy! <laughs> he has a way, exactly. Death Corps of Craig are some insane guys, oh boy. Fighters live in a death world that's more hospitable than almost any firefight they'll ever get into. So they just have this steroid looking Rambo! giant knife Rambo predator looking sons yeah! of bitches where nothing is anywhere near as scary as a simple knight on their home planet. You have the <laughs> Valhallen winter soldiers who haven't felt their toes in 300 mm. years, the Mordian Iron Guard who are more interested in making their shoes shine than actually <laughs> fighting a battle, and then of course the big one, the Cadians. Cadians! Cadia. Wait, what happened? Did they did they explode their home time? Did they explode the Cadia home time? No! Not my small brothers and sisters! Cadia stains! <laughs> the biggest export of guardsmen. Abandoned did a little uh, tomb foolery. Mm, Chaos Marines got salty and blew it up. Damn it! Stop it! Stop it, heretics! In the entirety of the Imperium. You will fire your first gun at 5. You will disassemble and reassemble it at 10. You will have pounding artillery drills day in and day out at 15. But it still stands in our hearts, exactly! 15, and you'll fight your first Swarm Lord at 16. And if you mention Kadia, you will burst into an unrelenting amount of tears and sadness like I do daily. To quote, I have at my command an entire battle group of the Imperial Guard, 50 regiments including specialized drop troops, stealthers, mechanized formations, armored companies, combat engineers, and mobile artillery. Over half a million mm. fighting men and 30,000 tanks and artillery pieces are mine to command. Emperor, show mercy to the fool that stands against me, for I shall not. The yes! Imperial Guard of Kadia stands as the guard held but the planet didn't. Shush, it's okay. I'm crying right now. We're all crying right now. Death Corps of uh, Craig reporting for duty. No! my personal favorite faction in 40k. They're the army I collect the most, the ones I enjoy playing the most, and the one I enjoy in the lore sense a lot. There's something about just a regular man with a laser rifle being told to charge the horrors of this universe and willingly doing so for his god emperor. It's just... It's like... <laughs> You have so many options to choose from. So many like big boys, marines. No, I'm just gonna be the most basic bitch. <laughs> I mean, I can respect that. I can respect that. He picks human fighter. Yep. Yep. He literally does. He literally goes with human fighter. Oh my god. <laughs> Poetic. They actually represent the main pew, pew, Imperial pew. Guard tactics pretty well. Large amounts of artillery that doesn't require a line of sight, lots of tanks, tons of infantry, drop troops, and gunships. You need a lot of minis for Cadia. You need a lot of minis for Cadia, consi considering they're winning by numbers, not by strength. This is the most expensive faction to play. <laughs> Action surge, more lasers. Yeah, they're expensive to collect. I can see that. Overall, they're pretty similar to how they sound, though a little bit expensive to collect, unfortunately. <laughs> Look at that. I knew it. I knew it. And they don't hit a lot. They have a bit of a bad aim, but you don't really care because you're just drowning them in shots. <laughs>
However, if you want more accurate fire and specialization, we can move on to talk about specimens. The big boys! The Angels of Death are up next. Space Marines are genetically engineered super soldiers and They're super big boys. They're given extra organs. Their skin tissue is toughened. Their mm. bones are stronger. They're taller than the average person. They're pretty massive people. And these are the specialized super soldiers that carry out a lot of the more specific What's tasks. What's this scene? Is it from a game of sorts or is it from some type of movie? Where Where is this scene coming from? Does anyone know? For the Imperium and there's... Dawn of War, I think, a trailer. Oh, I see, I see. Trailer for a game? Is it a trailer for a game? Extra uh, Benny's joke. <laughs> oh no! Do they really have more? But they don't need it, brother. It's not in need. The tabletop. Oh, okay, okay. Tons of legions of them. In fact, there's one per Primarch. Each Primarch, the Emperor's son, oh. as I mentioned before, oversees their legion of space marines. The genetic upgrade they get is based on the genes of said Primarch. It's something called a gene yeah. seed. That's what brings them up to this like superhuman level. We as don't stated, talk about each Primarch it. has their own legion. A uh, robot girly man has the Ultramarines. Jagatai Khan has the White Scars. A uh, Rogel Dorn has the Imperial Fists. Corvus Corax has the Raven Guard. And there's a whole bunch of other side sections that are also also extremely interesting and have a little bit more of a twist on the average space marines. Oh boy. We'll discuss in a so bit. many! Humorously enough, I don't have a whole lot to say about space marines. They're superhumanly fast. In, in fact, it's been said that nothing that large should move that quick. These men in power <laughs> armor moving at blazing fast speeds. Their reflexes are faster. Their skin is tougher. They are overall just extremely <gasps> powerful soldiers. Is that Zachary? In fact, it is where Zachary. they differ it comes down to which space marine legion we're talking about. For instance, the ultramarine done by Robot Girlman, Gilliman, Gil Gil are the main blue boys. <laughs> strong in almost every way, blue the Barry jack boys. of all trades kind of group that are a little bit too strong and that's a lore problem, but uh, the- But the blue boys! That was normal elders, was it? It didn't look like the normal elders, it looked like the Dakari. No, it doesn't look like normal elders. Uh... Fast speeds, their reflexes are faster, their skin is tougher. They are overall. No, these don't look like normal elders. No dark elder in uh, Dawn of War? No? All just extremely powerful. But they don't look like normal elders. They look like the Kari. They look like, a, like what we saw in the video where we were learning about the Kari. Soldier. Look at that. That looks like the witches. This is weird. I don't. Hmm. I feel like the elders were pre presented like the high elves, so I feel like they would not look like that. But maybe I'm wrong. In fact, where they differ comes down to which Space Marine Legion we're talking about. For instance, the Ultramarines done by Robot Girlman, Gilliman, Gil Gil <laughs> are the main blue boys. Strong in almost every way, the jack of all trades kind of group that are a little bit too strong, and that's a lore problem, but. That's you know, a different the, reason. The White Scars by Jagatai Khan Zoom! are all about speed freaks. Zoom go fast. Boys! We're talking attack bikes, we're talking land speeders. You want to go in quick, you want to hit them hard, you want them to be yeah! swimming around like. Like buzz flies, buzz, buzz, saw, buzz saws, <laughs> with the speed of buzz saws. <laughs> you just gonna buzz. Only one way to settle this debate: you gotta play the word. Oh boy, <laughs> meet the org boys. Fuck you, pale king. South. <laughs> Fuck you, Pale King! <laughs> Someone played Hollow Knight here. Salamanders love fire. Fire in the forge, fire in battle. Flamers, melta guns, mm, multi meltas. Mm, just mm. so long as something can be burning, that's big. And they're also actually some of the nicest of the yeah. space marines. A lot of space marines have this kind of like. Save the small brothers and sisters! holier than thou thing because of their genetic strength. However, the salamanders tend to put human lives above the lives yeah. of themselves, which is actually rather rare. They're also all black, but not like just regular black, like like 2 a.m. line at a white castle. Black, like they have a charcoal 
dark, ashy We're just exterior slightly and burned. blazing red eyes. Apparently something about living on their home planet of Nocturne, which I don't know if that makes much sense, but who cares? This is like fantasy land anyway. Overall, Salaman- We just, we, 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 we're just volcano boys. It's okay. Yeah, exactly. We're just volcano boys. Commanders are actually one of my personal favorite legions because they're just really cool. They're fun to play as because of all their flamer weapons. And Flame. they have a nice, like, more heartwarming lore as opposed to being super evil like everyone else. We're, we're the less evil ones. Shoutouts to the Elementers, another good boy chapter, just very, very unlucky. It doesn't, as I heard every time about Lamenters, they're not the lucky ones, yeah. Oh my god, we're not even a quarter of the way through the Space Marine Legions. Uh, Imperial Fists, believe in the power of the siege and defensive positions. Uh, Raven Guards, master of stealth and sabotage while having mm. burn helmets. Iron Hands, masters of machines and vehicles while being really goddamn good at being sold on eBay after one nerf. Space Wolves, <laughs> uh, Vikings. <laughs> Maybe this is what I should do. I should just buy the... The figurines on eBay of the faction that has been nerfed just to have it. <laughs> like, follow which legion they nerf, and I just, okay, I grabbed this one, it's cheaper now. <laughs> Maybe that's how you play this game. Budget friendly, check which one is nerfed. <laughs> Stonks. <laughs> and wolves, and tons of wolves, and, and axes, battle axes, fur everywhere, space wolves, so angry, big teeth, ah, Ow! blood angels, the genetic defect to make them want to drink blood and go crazy, called the red thirst. They have cupid Tasty. wings and stuff, which is a little bit strange, and they are all super gay for sanguineous. Listen, he looks pretty good, okay? You gotta give that boy that. Well, he used to look pretty good. Game Workshop seems to really hate Iron Hands. Oh no, why? I, I, I get it, I get it. He he looks pretty nice. For Sanguinius, for Sanguinius! Now I ain't gay, but Sanguinius! Dark Angels are old school knights and inner circle theme and... Are you a heretic? <laughs> Me? No, never. Once Death Watch. <laughs> We, we don't speak about anything else. To be fair, we all gay for some goodies. Exactly, we, we all the same. A fancy pantsy anti Xenos group that nobody plays because Death Watch and look cool though, but no one no. Why Why not? What's, what's wrong with Death World? The Fallen never heard of them. No, me neither. I don't plays them. I don't know about Death Watch. They're, they're, they're there though. Black Temp. Why, why not? What's wrong with Death Watch? Why no one wanna play Death Watch boys? Why? Poor Death Watch boys, they wanna be played too! We know that Iron Fist has been nerfed! Wars for the people. What Fallen? Do you. The Fallen, they don't exist. But if they do, we kill them. Yeah! People who, if you haven't prayed at least three times a day, you're gonna start praying at that airlock. And I'm sure there's some other chapters I may have missed as well, like Crimson Fists and stuff, but mm. those are the main ones right here. Here, here. That Fallen Witch doesn't exist? Yep. <laughs> Quote from the Emperor himself. They oh. shall be my finest warriors, these men who give of themselves to me. Like clay I shall mold them, and in the furnace of war I shall forge them. They oh shall boy. be of iron will and steely sinew. In great armor I shall clad them, and with the mightiest weapons shall they be armed. They will be untouched by plague or disease, no sickness shall blight them. They shall have such tactics, strategies, and machines that no Whoa. foe will best them in battle. They are my bulwark against the terror, they are my defenders of humanity, they are my space marines, and they shall know no fear. Yeah. And on the tabletop, they fuck. Oh, they fuck hard. As a but I thought they can't do that. I don't know why Death Watch is not played, they're just a special group made of veterans. Oh. Veterans. One way to put it. Yeah, the veterans that are not really liked in the Imperium, but they're too good to just kill them, huh? Making this video, Space Marines are laughably strong. That might change at some point, but overall, Space Marines just have the... It's like a Swiss Army knife. The Blueberry Boys! A tool boys. for anything you need, except it's like a gold-plated Swiss Army knife. <laughs> it is extremely strong.
If you are actually getting into the tabletop of Warhammer, Space Marines are a great start. Also, whatever gameplay style you have, whether you want to be sit back with long range and heavy weaponry, mm. go fast and run in, or even just mm. full melee, all of these options are totally there for yeah. you. Space Marines are super badass. They are very versatile. They work under the Inquisition, if I remember correctly, specifically the Ordo Xenos. Mm. Oh, because they're sinners. Oh, yeah, 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 makes sense. But unfortunately, it's time we start praying to our new god, the 2011 Honda Civic. So is it any wonder people are afraid of technology? Technology! The Adeptus Mechanicus. Yeah! Finally, we're gonna learn about the Mechanicus boys! No, really? There's only the Black Shields? Oh, it's just the Black Shields within the Death Watch. Okay, okay. The Adeptus Mechanicus are a technophile cult on Mars. Now, the Death Watch is not a pen uh, penitent legion. What does penitent mean? What does that word mean? Also, I love Mechanicus. I don't know what they have in them. Penalty. Oh, okay. Can we confuse there? No, <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. I'm, I'm looking at Mechanicus. I'm like, these boys are cool. I like these boys. That's it! I'm opening the wiki! <laughs> yes! We made Strap open the wiki! Yahoo! We did it, boys! <laughs> These people are a little bit weird because they don't actually really bit. believe in the Emperor of Mankind. And you might think, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Heresy. Frankie, that sounds like some heresy. A little bit. They believe in the Emperor. They believe in his power but they don't pray to him. They pray to something called the Omnissiah. And yeah. the Omnissiah is this kind of machine god that they believe permeates in all machines. And if you think, well, wait a minute, they believe in a different god as well? That's- Yeah, that's still heresy. Serving in Death Watch is actually an honor. Oh, I thought the Legion is for the punishment and Black Shields are the unmarked ones. Reserves for veterans that are super good at killing and hating Xenos. So then, okay, 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 okay. So then why in Warhammer 40k uh, Space Marine 2 we learned that Titus was in Death Watch and that's a bad thing. And and he came back and he was actually told that he was suspi being suspicious of uh, chaos corruption. W what's up with that? Because uh, he was a black shield. Okay, so he because he was specifically black shield. Okay. This is some uh, this is a specification that is sad that I didn't catch or it was not explained in the game. To be chosen by one's chapter to serve in the long Vigil of Death Watch is a great honor for any space marine. Only the most elite and experienced members of chapter are ever chosen for this extremely hazardous tour of duty, the specifics of which must be kept secret by inquisi inquisitorial order and secret oath, even from a Death Watch, a third's home chapter. Oh, okay. It was not explained in the game. Okay, so the game really much generalized it and that's why I got confused. Noted! Sounds like super heresy. Well, yes-ish, but they also make all your guns yeah. and they make all your tanks. Yeah. And they make everything that you have. Yep. So you can't really tell them to fuck off. Yeah! Because you're not gonna win nothing if you don't got stuff to shoot people with. See, their Omnissiah at least makes sense from their standpoint. They believe it to be a deity that permeates through all machines. Your Honda Civic, your standard <laughs> bolt gun, your Dune Strider Walker, your giant mechs, your huge ships. The Omnissiah is present through all. And the only reason your stuff works is because the machine spirit in it says it works. If yes. you want your gun- It's basically when you have coding and every every time in the code you have machine spirit equals true and the true is confirmed, the, uh, the, the machine works every time. 
Machine spirit equals no equals false. The machine stops working. <laughs> Black Shield itself is a reference to the tale of uh, Ivan Hale, who had this the this the code written on his shield, meaning this heritage. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Civic proves it all. <laughs> Run to work, your tank to run, you must pray to it. Yeah. And I mean full stop. You need to start chanting in high gothic. You yes. need to burn incense. You need to sit on your knees yes. and pray to that car. You need to run. To that car? No, 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 no. We don't pray to the car. We pray to the Omnissiah. Rub oil on your robes and you need to go, ahomina, 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 ahomina. <laughs> full stop. If you want your damn thing to work, if you want your yes. gun to fire, you need to do that. They are very bizarre and they actually have a bit of a point because it's obviously working. And yep. if you look- Me with my laptop, please work. It's me every time before a stream. Oh, the great Omnisaya, please make every single thing work. Please take this cuff away, please Omnisaya. <laughs> actually, yes. And actually, a messiah exists, and it works, so yeah! No scuff here anymore! As long as a messiah says so. VTubers might have a ritual before a stream. <laughs> yup, we all just sit, we there, we, we have the incense, we praying, we put the oils, and we all make a ritual before we stream, so everything works. <laughs> yup, to, to repel the scuff. <laughs> Outbreak now? Okay. Waiting for the ads to finish then. But yes, VTubers, VTubers are the special case of streamers where we really have to go to Omnisaya. I need a drink, makes sense. Mm, let me stretch really quick. Mm, yeah. This is a mistake Bricky made. Omnisaya is the Emperor, the physical incarnation of the mechanic god. Really? Is it is it true? I thought that Omnisaya is not the Emperor. I thought that Omnisaya is a separate machine god. That Emperor and machine god are separate things. And don't want the video to be disturbed? Yeah, makes sense. That's what the Mechanicus believe. They think it's the Emperor. Oh, okay. So the Mechanicus believes that Omnisaya, aka Machine God, is the Emperor. Okay, okay. It's like Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. So that's why they're allowed within the Empire. Because while they don't say it per se, that they're um, believing an emperor, they kind of do because they see him as the machine god. That the Imperium is actually worshipping the same god. Yeah, so they believe that they are basically worshipping the same thing. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. And also they are needed, you know, the machines work and how you, how you fight if no machine. <laughs> they are so wrong, they're actually right. <laughs> LOL! They're so wrong, they're actually right. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. The machine god is actually redacted. Uh oh. Uh, uh oh. <laughs> no information here about it, we know nothing. Mm, yep, yep. I love how much in the Warhammer lore is like, we don't talk about that. Won't say it here. I'm smelling heresy right now. I'm smelling some heresy here. <laughs> the cult mechanicus have a trinity similar to Christianity. Interesting, okay. Boswell revolted info is revealed. Oh, I see. We shall not, we, we cannot say that. We, the the, the, the um, streamland bot and the night bot, they will, they will redact it. Okay, okay. We should actually make it so that certain information from uh, Warhammer lore that shouldn't be said just gets freaking bonked by a bot. <laughs> so then we literally have the boss, like when you have here the machine god is actually and just whenever you say 
the actual fact, the bot just bugs you. It's like, no, moderation. <laughs> Going back to the uh, Death Witch facts. Originally, Black Shields were marines that came from a traitor uh, legion, but stayed loyal and chose to remove their heraldry. Oh, okay, interesting. We now have the origin of them. Okay. Okay, let's learn more about Mechanicus. I, I like this faction for some reason. I feel like it's funny. Look at them. I don't Just know how look that at works. the boys. So they obviously know something about what they're doing. The most notable member of the Adidas Mechanicus is Arch Magos, Magos, whatever, Belisarius Call. Look at, the, look at this dude. Look at this dude. Yeah. Yeah. That, this is the group we're talking about. Yeah. These are these weirdos. Here. He's not a weirdo. He just knows that the flesh is weak. I still need my phone and laptop to work, so yeah. <laughs> I see uh, Tori Farius has taken over. After all, I always take over. Mm, 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 mm. The Omniscient Creed. The, the, the Credo, Credo, eh, Omniscient. Uh -huh. There is no truth in flesh only betrayal. There is no strength in flesh, only yep. weakness. There is no constancy in flesh, yep, only makes decay. Sense. There is no certainty in flesh, but death. Flesh is yeah, weakness. Yeah, I mean, I mean, makes sense, guys. We are in an eternal war. Who needs flesh? It's, it's, it's useless, man. Be machine. <laughs> I'm in this stream named Ori. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't see it because OBS doesn't uh, update it for me. Counter, uh, counter argument. Flashlights. <laughs> Flesh can be eaten by nids. Exactly. Flesh can be eaten by nids. While mechanicus. That ain't gonna happen. Flesh is death. The Omnissiah is the god of the machines. And if yep. you wish to be whole, if you wish to be holy, if you wish to give unto him, you must saw down your limbs and remove your organs yep. and replace them with mechanical parts because yep. that is what he wants. And that is how you will become enlightened. We Hard should be all, we should be all just robots. We're attended by Chaos Brother. Brother, brother. Okay, Sito, you got me. Can't argue with that. Cardano would argue. <laughs> Cardano would like to argue. <laughs> but he has a point, though. No flesh, no booba. If you want to be a true machine, just embrace our gods, the Catan, and be a good old Necron. I know, but we can't. That's heresy. Isles mixed with religious extremism. That is Mechanicus. Now for their armies. Also, we have thingy called Silicon. Uh, end of conversation. I'm sorry. Just popped in my mind. Side of things. They are with the Skatari. The Skatari operate with very bizarre weaponry and lots of different kinds of vehicles, tanks, and different mm -hmm. people in between. Wait, They're so very we can weird, fight with them. Uh, but they have extremely wacky and, and enjoyable, and in fact, quite effective, both in the real game and in the lore. So you can play as them! You can go to battle! Ah! Ignore the fact Necrons are my favorite faction, totally loyal. Yeah, 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 of course or weaponry and gear. Overall, as an army on the tabletop, they're very weird and have a whole bunch of different shenanigans. Sounds but if fun. you like kind of that quirky, wacky techno thing, I yeah. think pick up. Hell, they're so paranoid. The one on Tower Yeah, 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 yeah. I just thought that it's not putting the mechanicals in the front lines. I don't know. I didn't thought that it's going to be like much of fighting. But it does pique my interest, considering that it's both about Mechanicus and freaking Necrons. It's like, ah, the two things that I really enjoy about this game. I, I gotta keep going. They're so paranoid and but they're crazy. Fun. These Dune Striders you see right and here, -based, one yep. guy was able to make them work. One but I heard it's very, I heard it's very complicated guy and he died and they're so scared they'll never work again that they keep them on and they never turn them off and they run around in a circle the whole time until they <laughs> need them and it's like guys guys it works don't touch it anymore D just don't touch it don't touch it anymore it works it works <laughs> don't breathe on it 
It's the it's the opposite of like a diesel car. <laughs> as long as it runs, it works exactly. It's like guys, it works. We can't touch it. And then they corral it and they go to battle. Yep, the adeptus mechanicus. <laughs> now, if you want to talk about faith, though, uh -huh. oh, oh. let's talk about the sisters of battle. Oh, we are finally learning about the sisters of battle. Let's go. I was waiting for this. None of his previous videos mentioned anything about him. Let me know. For an eagle in Lego City. The sisters of battle of the Adeptus. Oh Sorority. boy. Oh, me like you what me see. Nuns with guns. Let's go. The memories of battle. I mean. Us, if that's how I pronounce it correctly, is an all-female group of battle sisters yeah. going through the ecclesiarchy section of the Imperium. The ecclesiarchy is, of course, the church. This is, imagine a private army of the church. Yeah! Which is scary, and it is. The sisters are an extremely zealous force, and uh -huh. they take this to a full extreme. They believe in three main things. Faith, martyrdom and fire through the bolter fire! the flamer and the melta the sisters of battle are extremely potent at taking out chaos and heretics mainly oh. heretics because as they are a but they are not inquisition fighting section of the ecclesiarchy church that's the big thing they want to kill any form of heretic will face the emperor's justice through those three main weapons the bolter the flamer and the melta and they will do so with extreme prejudice uh -oh. literally they are the closest things we have to nuns in space and i'm talking hardcore nuns they carry yep. holy fire on their backs they have damn only i wonder how do they keep a top in space i think bricky won't mention it but the sister have different like chapters too oh my god like books and sigils all across their armor their main battle tank is a fucking pipe organ missile launcher i love it i freaking love it they're also field medics too right ah oh, that makes sense that makes sense but i love that they are main bottle thingy is a freaking pipe organ missile yes <laughs> the other uh sort of uh sororitas is a huge organization i can see that now they have small babies that they have These are the like, little removed thingies. their brain capacity to make them little servant cherubs to fly around and give them ammunition and shit they drop why why babies though why, why do we, why do we weaponize babies they're a guardsman's best friend i see sisters uh, hospital uh, hospitaler are your medics torture experts ah makes sense that they're both hi xavi welcome how are you doing today happy to see you hello churches from low orbit as many <laughs> drop pods onto battles they drop churches into <laughs> battles i mean listen how 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 to spread your religion if not by dropping a church <laughs> moms of the year 40k oh yeah and they blare war hymns and holy music from their frigates it. in low atmosphere and shower holy water across the battlefield these are the people you are dealing with and I they're love fucking it. awesome ding dong you haven't been to service we shouldn't start doing that in real life. just drop a church with music there's a section of the sisters uh, that are made out of sisters who have fallen to sin. They get a sword, some rugs, and sent in first wave to prove their faith is true. Damn! Okay! They can literally stave off demons on the tabletop because their faith is that strong. Damn. Remember the warp, the demons from the warp? Yeah. Well, the warp also manifests in your mind. All of your emotions, negative and positive, go through the warp. It's the immaterium. The, the uh, sisters repent, yeah, I see. Faith is a legit power in 40K. Oh yeah, I've noticed that. 
place of all things. So if you are that mentally fortified, that mentally strong, you can stave off horrifying <laughs> demons. And all these girls, oh, not a crack. Not a crack in Damn, that Damn, they're strong. Now, as much as a meme as they are, and as much as their models look a lot like Ongo, Ongo <laughs> Gabloglian, yeah, Why? which I can't unsee anymore. I gotta say, <laughs> I love Why can't you make them look cool? Why all of them have to have this hairstyle? No! Can I paint the hair different colors? Like not just white? Faith is, uh, yeah, the models are kind of whack. Why would you do this? Why can't you make them cool, man? Colors of Warhammer, no! <laughs> Their design. I think they're extremely cool. They're another army that I'm currently- I love this one though. This model looks awesome. There's a lower reason for white hair, I see. But no, this model, this model looks awesome. I like this model. This The model of the missile is super cool. I like it. They want to speak to the managers of the Chaos Demons. <laughs> collecting they just released a whole new line of figures very recently and they look this looks wonderful. awesome everything from celestine the living literally undying Damn. saint from the triumph of saint catherine which is literally a funeral procession wow. as a model those organ tanks i meant but the faces on the models look kind of weird too they uh, that's uh, on Game War Workshop. Yeah, I know. I know. Surprised after all that uh, shitty uh, they went through. <laughs> yes, I'm surprised. I want them to be sexy. Mentioned earlier, this shit is the most over the top bad. It looks very cool, though. I really like the models. A lot of the Warhammer universe. Of like and the, goddamn um, it, is it over the top. But I like the models, not of the like small figurines of uh, separate sisters. I like the big models, the one of the organ uh, missile and the one of the procession. Make sisters of battle sexy again. Yeah, hashtag make sisters of battle sexy again. <laughs> sisters of battle are so cool. While I'm a guardsman at heart, oh, this is such a cool faction by Bolter. Sororitas organ tanks, uh, Tyranids organ tanks. <laughs> To defeat Slinish, one must be sexier. Exactly! Shell, Flamer Burst, and Melta Blast, the mutant, the heretic, and the traitor alike are cleansed of their sin of existence. So it has been for five millennia, so shall it be until the end of time. Yep. And speaking of burning demons. I, I can <laughs> see! I, I, I think, I think we got to the boys to stop everyone from being seduced by chaos, seduce them first. Yeah! The Grey Knights are the first army I actually collected back in 7th edition. Oh? The Grey Knights are a super secretive and much more old school look at power armored knights. Except they are all psychers. All of them nice. have that crazy space magic magician shit. Wizards. For every 100,000 guardsmen, there's one Grey Knight. For every 10,000 Sisters of Battle, there's one Grey Knight. For every 1,000 Space Marines, there's one Grey Knight. Grey Knights are the strongest of the strong, Drunk. both in mental will and absolute just strength. These are Space Marines that are all high-level psychers. All of them able to specifically do one goal, and that is kill demons. The Emperor believed that the demons of chaos were the number one threat to the mm -hmm. Imperium, and he probably is right. However, yep. this group is entirely based on doing that through Whoa. a myriad of tactics. Coming from the planet, or I guess the moon, of Titan <laughs> in the Soul System, the Grey Knights are thrown through extremely rigorous training and are as clear of mind. I love that their swords look like the um, laser swords, like the ones from uh, Star Wars, basically. I will send you something? Okay, 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 okay. Bow, bow, bow in soul as they possibly can be. Since the demons of the warp are the warp and your mind mm -hmm. projects to the warp, yep. people can go insane very fast, especially yep. lower level psychers. These Grey Knights need to be able to harness the warp in the presence of demons and stay perfectly sane. 
One of their characters, one of my favorite characters, is named- Are they able to go to the warp and be unaffected? That would be interesting of Yas. Can they, like, go to the warp and because of how strong they are in the psyche, can they be just fine there? Hmm... Castle and Crow. He has a demon blade, the black blade of Maha- Kinda yes, kinda no. No, but they are at risk still. Okay, okay. Mahama, and he has to have it on him because it tempts everyone nearby, constantly beckoning them. Use my power. Use my strength. Suck my penis. Whatever. <laughs> Wait a second. What? <laughs> so if they set food in warp, they can't return. Oh, okay. They have teleporting units as a troop choice, so they go through the warp on a whim. They must fight there to eternity? Damn! Okay, Discord. I, I was told to check my Discord. Wait, is this the old game or is it the- This is the old game, right? Where you fight the orcs. This is the Space Marines first game, right? I didn't saw it in a second game. Few years old? No, what is it then? It's a halibut. Demon Hunters? Oh, it's Demon Hunters. I believe they are called Grey Knight Interceptors. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Interesting. Okay, so they can go down to warp. For the or possibility. Fruit. And so he has to keep it on him all the time as this thing whispers to him consistently. Oof. And he has to stave it off forever. That doesn't sound like a fun time, man. That doesn't sound like fun time. Being alone in his chambers or on the battlefield, because anyone who gets too close to it might be tempted a little too hard. He is that pure. So I literally, it's like literally getting constantly the little voice in the back of your head. Hey, you want chocolate? You want chocolate? And you have to hold the chocolate because of the chocolate. Who tempts you? This boy is one of my favorite characters. Crow is a freaking G, my goodness. Lonely boy, lonely boy indeed of heart and mind, and all the characters in the Grey Knights are basically like that. The only issue mm. is that um, Grey Knights have a Scorched Earth policy, you know, more ways than one. If they're fighting demons, demons corrupt they're and evil. make people crazy. So if I'm a guardsman, and I'm fighting demons, and the Grey Knights arrive- But, but look at the demons, though! How you fight those? I've, and they kill all the demons. I'm a risk. And so guess who's not making it out of there? <laughs> On the tabletop, they're very yeah, strike fast. Tori, no, I said nothing. Must be slanesh. Yeah, must be slanesh. <laughs> strike hard kind of people. They teleport all around the place. They are fast strike groups, small amounts of models because they're so dang strong. You only yeah. have so many characters, but with it. Okay, I have a question about the tabletop version of the game. Uh, when you're collecting a specific legion, let's say you're collecting the Grey Knights, or you're collecting, I don't know, uh, the Thousand Suns or whatever else, do you have a rule book of how many figurines you can use per battle, for example? Yes, okay, that's, that's what I wanted to know. Because otherwise it would be very confusing if you use the same amount of Grey Knights as Cadian. That, I think that would not work very well as a balanced game. <laughs> Wanted to make sure. Okay, okay, that makes sense, that makes sense. Ah, boop! Each faction and chapter has a rule books. Every playable faction has its own arm comp uh, uh, compositions. Okay, okay. Thank you for the hot pots all switch. Thank you, thank you. Okay, that makes sense. You get in there, you're very tough, very tanky, you hit really hard, and you- So wait, when you're when you're playing the game, you have to have a specific number of figurines to play it? Like, you cannot have less than something? Because it makes no sense then? Am I understanding this correctly? That you, like, when you're collecting the units, you should have a specific amount of units of each legion that you're trying to play as? It's a lot of figurines of yes. Oh, boy. Must be exact. Oh, my goodness. I, I see. That's a lot of collecting stuff. Okay. You try to bounce around the battlefield quickly, but... You don't have numbers, and so every dead Grey Knight hits really damn hard. 
They're fun, mm -hmm. though, if you like that kind of uh, fast-striking kind of army. Oh, and also, mm -hmm. uh, Kaldor Drago is a thing. Where are I going to get into Kaldor Drago? Aww, right, I want to know. Uh, oh, my goodness gracious. I am the hammer. Mm. I am the male about his fist. I am the spear in his hand. Though we are lost, I am the shield on his arm. I am the flight of his arrows. I am the hammer. I am the sword. I am the shield. I am a soldier at the battle at the end of time. Mm. Grey Knights are pretty hardcore. They are as holy as you can get for a space marine. If you like space marines and you want to, you know, that they're holy enough, you want to be holier? I mean, yeah, it makes sense. Grey Knights. Now, if you want to be holier and big, let's talk Imperial Knights. Oh? Do you like gigantic walkers the size of homes? Big boys! Or medium sized Incoming! Buildings? Do you want to kill heretics, but you want to kill like 40 of them? Her mm -hmm. turn. Do you, Do you want to kill like 40 heretics whenever you just stomp? <laughs> Hi, Rattle, welcome. Happy to see you. Hello, hello. Do you want a gigantic old school knight noble house style of walkers with <laughs> giant chainsaw arms? Then you We're got just Imperial big Knights. boys. Imperial Knights, it's not a whole lot to talk about them because they're just gigantic walkers, but they have this old school like house feel to them like literally like there are houses each imperial knight comes from a house and each of them act in their own special way these behemoth of walkers also destroy almost everything in their path killing full swaths of squads wow. in a couple shots stepping on legions of troops like these things do not mess around is there a human inside of them or is it just a machine? Hello, Lina, welcome! Happy to see you! How are you doing today? Hi, hi! Yes? Okay. <laughs> and they look so cool. Imperial Knights and Chaos Knights, actually, for that. A prin uh, princeps, I think. A crew, right? It's like a ship. Okay, so it's, it's a crew of people. Okay, okay. It's a big boy. You cleaned on uh, of these in PWS? Yeah, I, I yeah, I think I did clean one of these in the in the power wash simulator. Yeah, 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 yeah. That matter. Don't have a whole lot to discuss. They're just super big, heavy walkers, and they look different depending on your house or chaos god you currently believe in. And overall, these things are just really cool if you want to murder everything in your path. They're the big, scary, big unit of Warhammer, and if you want to collect them. Go to town. They make for a great. I really like the freaking model. Game over back down to earth. Let's talk. For Imperial Knights, it's a single pilot. Oh no, it's piloted by one guy. Okay, there's one person piloting this one. Okay, okay. Like Check the bit, uh, A little bit different. A little more. I'm asking too many questions, man. I'm having too much fun learning. <laughs> Gold. If guardsmen are regular soldiers. Space Marines are super soldiers. Uh -huh. Grey Knights are super, super soldiers. Uh -huh. The Adeptus Custodes are super soldiers cubed. The Adeptus Custodes are the third major army I own. They look interesting. The models look interesting. Works as a refreshment for me. <laughs> Henry Scavell's faction. Yep. This is our boys faction. I know, three armies. I know, I, I, I got carried away, okay? But that, that's all. I only have three, okay? It's... Do you? Do you have only three, Bricky? How many do you really have? Tell us now. Considering that one of them is Kadia, probably. That's like four when you count the figurines. Ugh. <laughs> they are our... He, his wallet cried in the background all of them times two. Oh my God, that's a lot. <laughs> final brand of space marines but these ones are super special okay if a guardsman is six foot a space marine is seven feet a custodian is eight feet these are the giant defenders of holy terra which is also earth earth is terra earth terra uh -huh. themselves these are the people that literally guard the emperor's throne room and they must the be strong these boys protect the Emperor's throne room at all times and are literally like handcrafted people. They're not humans mm. brought up by a gene seer or something. These are all handcrafted super soldiers. Oh. I think from a tube. These behemoth of men are like eight feet, eight and a half feet tall and functionally immortal. They stand Damn. still 
spear in hand for hundreds of years without the need to sleep and barely even the need to eat, watching over the throne room and every wow. other area of holy town. They don't need to eat, but do they want to or can they? Origin chapter is the Space Wolves. Oh, interesting. Noble families offer infants to you? Yeah, that's my question. Like, since they are created according to Bricky, they are created from tubes. So they are not upscaled humans. They are literally created specifically to be perfect for this role. On even unborn babies? Mmm. Hera for their entire purpose in life. And oh my lord, are they terrifying. These custodians put space marines to shame. If you liked your super soldiers, these are your super mega soldiers. One of these <laughs> men can take on- Ricky can be wrong as we learned. Yes, that's why I'm asking. They are babies of the noble of Terra and then from their genetically crafted. Okay, so you give a baby and then the baby is gen genetically changed into this huge thing. Noted. On probably three space marines and most likely win. There are many different groups of custodians as well, like the Solar Watch, or there's also one of my personal favorite, the Aquilin Shield. Oh, the Aquilin wow. Shield go out to seemingly unimportant individuals and protect them because they believe that they are going to be doing something very important in uh -huh. their lives. For instance, let's say a, a regular guardsman gets the protection of this giant eight and a half foot tall <laughs> golden god because Love. that guardsman will end up becoming a general one day or something oh. of that nature. The custodians work in mysterious ways. This one, only like one out of thousand survives. Mm. Space Marines are the mass-produced version of Custodios. Basically, Custodies are perfected individuals. Okay. Like, Space Marines is genetically changed during puberty, to put it easily. A Custodies is handcrafted from birth. Mm, I see, I see. Remember that there is a specific part of the Custodies that's basically SCP on steroids, the Shadow Wardens. My goodness, so there is even stronger custodies than than freaking um than freaking custodies. Okay, okay, noted, noted. I understand now. And are almost always outnumbered, but never outmatched. These people are pretty horrifying, both on the tabletop as well as in the lore. There mm. are very few of them, however, and there's actually an extremely small amount of them. See guys, the best one to collect. You need the least amount of people, for, the least amount of figurines, thus the cheapest, the players. <laughs> but that's kind of the point. There's only so many of these people that can have war gear this strong, yeah. weapons this powerful and training this good. And the custodians have all three of it. For 100 yeah. years, I stood my watch amidst the somber shadows of the Sanctum Imperialis. I was still as a statue, but always ready, always attuned to dangers unseen. Days, months, oh years passed by in a frenzied blur beyond those walls, yet within, little moved and nothing changed. For 100 years, I did not but wait, yet had any threat appeared, I would have struck it down in a heartbeat. For 100 years, I stood my watch, and as it ends, I can tell you this, Patience is a weapon. The Wait, so the, are they getting put on a watch for 100 years and then they can go into battle or something? I read this quote somewhere. It's strong. Dreadnaughty. Oh, boy. But yeah, it's like, um, do they have like uh, swaps when they are on watch or they, they if they are put on watch, they just stay there until the end of their life whenever that happens, like... I don't know, on a battle or something. <laughs> Knowing that these people probably don't really die of old age, considering their genetical... Yes, they just stay. Okay. Custodians are the top dogs of the Imperium. And, and they hurt just that same way. Though I do want to discuss a little bit about the Sisters of Silence before we get out of oh? here. Because the Sisters of Silence I also have a few of. And they're really fun, but they don't get enough attention. These kind of bald... Plume ladies are a whole group of pariahs, or also known as blanks. We'll be referring to them uh -oh. as blanks from now on. So as every mind is somewhat connected to the warp, these blanks... I heard that those uh, on the watch are actually on the break from the actual fighting. Oh, I see. Weirdly hot. I don't know. I prefer girls that have more hair. 
mutants are a genetic mutation that is, has it suppressed heavily. Because of that mind suppression, normal people feel this weird, like, uncomfortable nature when uh -huh. around them. When a sister of silence walks past them, you feel ill. You feel just uncomfortable and strange. So okay. most of them don't actually live past childhood, because once they oh. are birthed, they're, well, you know, killed or something at a very young age because they just emit a horrifying aura. These oh, ladies, however, are guardians of the throne as well for more psychic threats. See, none of the custodians oh. are psychics. So they have a difficult time dealing with major demons and other kinds I've of I've never heard of phenomena. these. These sisters are extremely specialized in it. All of them taking a vow of silence as they don't speak, hence the term. Why are they so... Why, wait, wait, what? Silence, but they communicate through hand gestures and things uh -huh. of that nature. But if there's a demon issue, if there's any kind of warp-based problem, the sisters are extremely adept at dealing with them, thanks mm. to their blank gene. Aura of stupidity. Twitter? Yes. Yes. <laughs> they normally work a lot of time with the custodians because they have to deal with both kinds of threats, but they're not represented that way on the tabletop. In fact, they only have like one real model for them, which is very unfortunate. Oh, that's sad. It would be so cool then if, if they actually made this a good playable part as well. It sounds very interesting. I hope they'll get something like, new soon because I think they should really there be is one. working together as it is that way in the with world. Twin Hopefully we'll get there soon. But if we're talking about blanks... In the back. Wait, what? There is one with twin tails in the back? Wait a second. Oh, I see it! Oh my god, it looks great! I love it! They're not represented that way on the tabletop. In fact, they only have like one real I love the twin form, tails. very unfortunate. I hope they'll get something like, new Cute. soon because I think they should really be working together as it is that way in the lore. But hopefully we'll get there soon. I saw one of them use sign language. Nice. But if we're talking about blanks, let's talk assassins. My oh, we have assassins. It's been a long video. <laughs> we're about to. <laughs> it makes me feel uncomfy. Ba -ba 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 -ba. To round it out. We got this and one more human thing, and then we're done. The assassins, though, the officio assassinorum. Oh boy, these people are deadly. Yeah, they're called assassins. They should be, but oh uh -huh. man, these people will. Bricky is so excited about this one. Oh no, it makes me excited. Mess you up. So these are from the Officio Assassinorum, a very special organization, and they are handpicked by the Grand Master of the Officio Assassinorum uh -huh. from the, shit, what was it called? Scola Progenium. <laughs> okay. It's basically an orphan school. If your parents got murdered by demons or something, you get sent to this and you get trained to be whatever. Uh, Tempestus Drop Troop, uh, an Inquisitor maybe. This Inquisitor! Oh my god, the art is so cool! Can I be one of those? This looks cool! I love this! If we can't have a, a Drakari Assassin game, we must have an Assassinate... Uh, uh, Assassinora game? Yes! He should know that place he goes... <laughs> That art is from Dawn of War Re Retribution. I love this! Look at it! It looks so awesome! Absolutely great. Inquisitor drip goes hard. God damn it does. Even uh, maybe you get a blank gene and you get thrown into the sister's silence or sometimes you just disappear. When you are taken, however, you go to one of four temples because the Assassinorum works in a temple style of things. Uh -huh. Each of these temples are the Vindicare, Caluxus, Calidus, and Eversore temples. Let's start with the Vindicare. I'm far away. I've been Yo. sitting here for three weeks. The Vindicare Temple <laughs> is the main sniper-based temple. Gigantic sniper rifles for all these assassins. Their whole point is to be able to be in a spot and sit there, eye in scope, for weeks. Damn! The Death Watch works for the Inquisition? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, a TF2 sniper mains, basically. Yeah, he just sits there for weeks. Making sure he kills this one person or creature he needs to. Waiting for their perfect target. Taking people out from literal miles away after extremely long time periods. The Vindicare Temple is about precise 
perfect aim. Mm. There have been reports of Vindicares being able to single out particular standards. body parts <laughs> from over two, three miles away. Temples in the head, the jugular, for instance, and been sitting there after weeks. And when they're ready, take that shot. Time is done. Packs them up. The Caldus Temple, however, is a lot more about shape. Hello there. That's a nice clothing you have there. Hi. <laughs> One of them uh, went after an inquisitor. Oops. <laughs> Accurate patience, boys. Patience pays off, guys. This is the prime example of that. Yes. <laughs> Shifting and deviant art. It's mostly a female-based one, or at least it seems to be, and this allows a lot of body augmentation for certain individuals to be able to kind of transmorph themselves and huh? infiltrate areas that are problems. These assassins will end up taking missions that take them years, two, three years, ah, to infiltrate. They, they are Alfarius. They, they are Alfarius, my friend. <laughs> a heretical group and slowly work their way up just to get enough time to put a bullet in those are the tau ah those okay okay gonna pause gonna see the details such a cool design yep 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 to the main target's head and then escape unharmed or become the main target and sabotage it from within. These are ah. all completely about deception, mind tricks, polymorphing, and everything in between. And uh, lots of drawings. <laughs> I love the fact that this is mainly female-based one, where you have to be the freaking uh, liar all the time. Lots of drawings. And mind the trickery. Eversor Temple. Just kind of disturbing one. The Eversor Temple is about when you don't want anything to come back alive, friend or foe. You want it all Damn. dead. And Eversor is psychogenically conditioned with just psychotherapy and psychological torture to only feel violence, hatred, and oh anger. boy, It does the Clockwork Orange style of thing of just making you forced to watch never-ending pain and misery and, and psycho conditioning, I guess is the term. Oh boy. And then they... The clubbing of uh, my magics are keep alerting the guards. <laughs> Pump you full of tons of psychedelic drugs and they cryo-freeze you. And then they drop you in an area where they just want to make sure everything is dead. And oh, so basically they make you psycho. I think psychopaths would be the perfect fit for this. And you defrost full of just all this insane, mind-boggling psychotherapy and, and Yeah, this is Berserker, drugs, yeah. And you just go to town. Yeah, if you you don't care if anyone comes back alive. You're like, all right, yep, lost yep. cause, send them in, fine. They, 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 they are just the Viking, they're just, okay, Um, th this area, yeah, we, we don't like anything in here. Let's just drop one of these. <laughs> Finally, there's the most bizarre temple, the Calexus Temple. The Cluxus assassins are feared even among the other temples. So that blank gene, the people will go to the Cluxus temple with this as well. And this is where they can harness that to be massively anti-psyker or even just anti-regular people. They are seen with extreme fear and uh, distrust among many, many people. They are described by the Eldar by quote as being pure evil. Imagine that uncomfortable feeling Damn. from that blank gene I mentioned, and then imagine them being taught and given equipment to amplify it by a hundred. If oh, normally no. regular people feel uncomfortable, now they are- the, These guys, these guys are the ones who have this aura, don't come near me. Oh, you don't like me? Let me make you don't like me even more now. <laughs> are basically akin to being a siren they weaponized wailing in your ear. And if you're a psyker, oh no. The sheer presence of a Klux assassin. Blanks are worse to psychers and elder being heavily psychers. They're, yeah, I can, I can see that issue here. IT people. <laughs> Maybe that's what they are. 
is enough for you to tear your skin off. You will rather gouge your eyes out and rip your nails off than even being near this person. Oh the boy. closest assassin is when you want psychers to literally lose their minds and they will go on their knees and ask you to gun them down because <laughs> it is a suitable Damn. choice over being anywhere near you. The motto of that temple is that which is unknown and unseen commands the greatest fear. Damn. Now for the tabletop, assassins aren't that special. You can call them in no matter Aww. what Imperium faction you are. And they do a lot of work for themselves, but at the same time, they're very specialized and require a lot of finesse. And yeah, they work sense. the way you generally want them to, though. You want to cause some distortion and weird stuff, you take a Calidus. You want to just murder swaths of infantry and then blow up Eversor. You want to kill that one guy, Vindicare, and if you have a lot of Psychers, Caluxus. It's a nice little, like, jack-of-all-trades if you have a mm. specific thing you want to kill. Can and you be can choose spot. which, which is really fun. But now... Let's talk about the last human faction. We can round this video out before we do part two. The Inquisition. We got the Inquisition! Similar to League players. <laughs> oh boy. We have a lot to talk about with them. Well, not the subject of heresy! Oh boy. <laughs> Where do I even begin with the Inquisition? Oh my god, I didn't even notice that you can do it with the uh, keys on your keyboard. They are beautiful, like, um... Mark! Take, take every secret police you can think uh -huh. of. Uh, the KGB, the Gestapo, the CIA, FBI, uh -huh. any of these kinds of people. And then mark it up by about 10 <laughs> and give them the most power in the entire Imperium. No, You know what? How about this? This, this right here, uh -huh. it's a, not just a quote. This is the imperial motto, the motto of the Inquisition. Oh, I no. I apologize for my bad pronunciation. Innocentia nihil probat. Innocence proves nothing. This is what you guys were telling me all the time. One Inquisitor was Mechanicus, uh, makes sense. The most powerful organization in the Imperium the secret police, their number one motto is innocence proves nothing. The Inquisition goes around. I think I understand why in this universe, because even if you're innocent by yourself, it doesn't mean that you're not um, already influenced by chaos or other forces. You know what I mean? You yourself may not have anything bad, but yeah, you may have been influenced already. Give them the most power, which could go wrong. Nothing, nothing. I see nothing that could go wrong there. At risk, exactly. Everyone is guilty before proven guilty. Yup. Like the secret police or look, like the they to find issues in the Imperium. And they have different Ordos, depending on which one we're talking about. The Ordo Hereticus, <gasps> the Ordo Xenos, uh, the Ordo Malleus, for instance, and a whole bunch of other ones. Hereticus is obvious, they deal with it heretics. Looks so cool. Xenos tries to find alien threats, and Malleus is demons. They all have different specializations I love the first in one. what they're trying to go for as this Inquisitor. And that's what they're called, Inquisitors. Each of them, as an Inquisitor, has their own free reign to do as they wish. They may have a ship and a crew, and they go... You must be busy doing another wrongdoing to prove you didn't do another logic. I am with the Ordo Xenos. Mm -hmm. I know they don't care if you're guilty or not, but they got the drip, so give them most power. Exactly! They look so cool, though. They must be good, right? Go out to find problems and interrogate people a lot. They are above the law in every department. They are the law. <laughs> Over space marines. Now, the space marines might argue against them and stuff, and there might be a lot of blowback, but technically they are above them as inquisitors. I am the law. 
They are looking to investigate and figure out coups and cults and demonic incursions and possible Xenos issues like mm. gene stealers or a new uh, threat coming into an area. They're about learning that stuff and actually doing detective work. And memes aside, they're pretty good at it. The Inquisition having all of this power does make them a little bit power hungry and frantic sometimes. But they are strong and they know how to do it. My favorite is Inquisitor Lore Hector Rex, if you ever want to look him up. Mm -hmm. I love it when grey knights run into the Inquisition. Oh, hello, bro! <laughs> And yes, it is still a bad thing, but most of them are pretty good at their job and they spend a lot of time She reminds me of the Red Queen from Alice in the Wonderland. Is it just me? <laughs> is it is it just me Inquisitor Lord? I'm sorry my bad being very diligent to make sure that all of these leads they follow are proper and correct. They're basically space detectives. Has the French noble trip? Exactly! That's what I mean. That's what I see, man. <laughs> There's a big red button they have. Oh. Button! With just enormous power and sometimes a bit of a power complex. And we haven't even talked about Exterminatus yet. Exterminatus. Exterminatus is deeming a planet unfit to be saved. Uh -huh. I deem that this planet is demon infested and taking it back will cost too many resources and is not worth it. I have now committed Exterminatus on this planet. I will now sign the death warrant of an entire Imperium planet as it is unfit to take and better to be destroyed than allow the enemy to hold it. But, but what if humans? No! Let them eat cake after, no. This can mean saturation bombardment. This can I don't mean like that button anymore. Breaking it apart, doesn't matter. Render this planet inhospitable to all life. Yes, the innocence proves nothing people are the only people who can choose this planet must die in its entirety. Yeah, you're playing the villain. <laughs> now it is- I wouldn't say this is a good idea to give them so much power, but at the same time, I get it. To be fair, he is a uh, memeing here a bit because Exterminatus is also used to contain chaos infection before it spreads out to other planets. Yes, they... Because they are above law and they understand the chaos stuff and everything else, they can probably have the best idea of which planet is most likely not to be retrieved anymore. Uh, Cryptmas ships Exterminatus button must be pretty worn out. Oh boy. Rather one billion than untold billions. Yeah memed a lot, but most Inquisitors are very rare to do Exterminatus. Exterminatus is a very crazy thing. There's only so many worlds that you don't want to destroy all of them. Uh, now naturally- I guess at least they understand that, hey, um, we don't have too many planets. Let's not destroy all of them. With the memes aside, there are some people who are a little bit rough on this one. <coughs> Is an Inquisitor uh, of the Ordo Xenos also known Major Tyrannic Wars? Uh, what did he do? What, 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 what did he do? How, how many did he kill? <laughs> what did he do? Did he destroy way too many planets? Oh no. <clears throat> but most Inquisitors generally don't like to do Exterminatus a ton, but it is an option. He found the Tyranids? Oh no. Oh no! <laughs> ...they have, and it's a crazy option when you think- I saw better looking female. The, the first art of the Inquisition looked better than this one. Think about it. Secret Police Inquisition are- Although her model looks not bad. Gotta, gotta do, gotta, gotta say that. The model looks pretty cool. These are also a good reason for exterminators, I mean. <laughs> Didn't find them, but they had an idea, uh, idea to contain one of the high fleets. Oh, oh. That's why he blows up planets. But, 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 but they're everywhere, though. <laughs> 
are unfortunately not represented on the tabletop very much. You generally kind of put one in your army if you feel like it. You have a couple special options there and some side content, but they're not really fleshed out very well. And personally, they need a lot more stuff put in there and they, they really need a lot more effort put into them and they're not quite where i want them to be overall the inquisition makes for a lot of the best storytelling as well because ah. it's a little bit hard to talk about a big story of a whole bunch of space marines killing something right it's just a big battle story it's not as interesting having that intrigue and that moral yeah. dilemma that an inquisitor has makes for a lot better media and honestly, the more people do it, I think it's better because then it adds a little more humanity to the Warhammer horrible, horrible grim darkness. And wow, we just finished the humans. All Yay! right, come back for part two when we talk about chaos and Xenos because we got to talk about the four chaos gods and all the chaos marine legions uh -huh. and the Tau and the Necrons uh -huh. and the Orcs. And oh uh -huh. boy, we got a lot. I'll see you in part two. <laughs> definitely, definitely. I don't know when I can do that part two, considering that they're both a uh, similar, um, similar length, basically. So, and it took us, yeah, two hours basically to to react to this one. This will be a long freaking video on 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 YouTube. I really, really enjoy this. <laughs>